Now let's go to Facebook Live so we can make sure that our Facebook people see it. where I'm at because my background don't change. Boom. Let's see. Going live on Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Let's get this together. Go live. I'll title it later. Boom. Yeah. Oh, we on time. Hey, now. Let's see. They said, let's see, let's see, let's see. We are, boom, live and on time. That's what's up. See, look at your alert go off because I just went live. I see who be paying. I see who be paying attention when I go live. I heard them alerts go off. <laughs> what's good, Facebook? What's good, good Facebook? Sir. How are we, Facebook? We are back. Woo! Before, while I share this, I'm gonna let my co-host introduce these things. And I'll put you might as well put you on the flyer, bro, because I seem like you always on with us, rocking out, giving that good, mature information. <laughs> yes. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna let my co-host tonight introduce themselves while I share this on Facebook. Go ahead, Joe. Ladies before gentlemen. Hey now. <laughs> well, thank you, gentlemen, for having me. You got Jay Monet, just laugh, motivational speaker with a comedic flair. What? <laughs> Sharing the loves and the laughs and uh being a soft sensual sexual side of y'all males <laughs> yeah, we, we, I, I see we're gonna have some fun hey yeah and i'm your man simply d the co-host of open conversation co-host of be mindful in the morning i'm also a writer uh waiting to get my books published from time to time i might do some modeling and some acting Oh, sexy, sexy. Go on, big daddy. Yeah, we got, we got, and, and real quick, let me jump on here. I'm Mark Five, uh, co-host of Open Conversations, Sador Radio. I guess you could say uh, the mind behind Sador Radio. Also, yeah, I got to put this over here. I need some light. <laughs> Look, also co-host of the show tonight with Miss J. Monet. This is her first show. We had to bring, like she said, a soft side. There we go. That's better. We had to bring a soft side to the show because, you know, we always want to get both sides of the uh, the platform when it comes to what we do here on the radio. So for you women, you know, we even in the playing field. So look, forward, look forward to us, uh, you know, talking about all topics and making it a roundabout show, making it an even platform. So that way, it's just not one side. And if you would like to chime in, of course, you always can call 215-909-6070, or you can email us at sidorradio at gmail.com. We're going to be here on the first and third Wednesday from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. I know some of y'all wondering why we came on so late. That's so we can talk our stuff. Yeah. Talk about our adult talk without having to worry about the letters, the three letters <laughs> coming after <laughs> Sador Radio from some of the stuff that we say. And again, like I always try to explain to people, I'm looking down as I'm trying to share on Facebook, so I don't think I'm hearing y'all on Zoom. Um, like I always say, our opinions are not, is our opinion. So don't be coming after Sador when we say what we feel. <laughs> We're responsible for our own opinions, even me, because I say <laughs> stuff sometimes that I feel as though that that's the way I feel. And, and I think I said this on one of the shows um, that when the world becomes a little more non-sensitive, if that's a word, and understand that everybody has their own opinion, and we have to learn to just respect the person's opinion. We don't have to agree with everything that everybody say, exactly. but we just have to learn how to respect each other as far as each other's opinion. Some things I might say you might not like. Jay Monet might say things that you don't like. Simply D might say things you don't like. But at least give us that respect and understanding that we are our own people and we have our own opinion on different topics that we might discuss here tonight or any other future show. Exactly. So on that note, <laughs> let me got that out the way. What's going on, good people? How are y'all? Everything I, is I'm wonderful chill. over here. I'm still trying to share. So how was y'all week? <laughs> 
Thank you. I'm, I'm down here in the city anticipating riots and, and all that good stuff and working with the police enforcement, trying to keep the city safe. Man. <laughs> Jay Monday, how was yours before you even hit the floor? <laughs> I was I was great. Hit the floor, hit the gas pedal, but go ahead. Jay Monday, how was your week? My week my week's been pretty good. My weekend's been pretty good. It's a beautiful thing for me, honestly, being at home right now because I have more control. Like simply he out there, he wanna clock his things he has to do. I'm on my own clock and that's a beautiful thing. So I'm not as stressed. I'm not, you know, under those time restraints. So it's just a nice, easy flow over here. You know, good spirit, good heart, baby. Shucks, there's not a whole lot to that. <laughs> I, I don't know where Mark at, because I just really thought about it. Y'all double teaming me. It's two of y'all to one me. No, but I can not. handle it. No, we not. I can handle it. I'm not going to double team. I had to turn my tea water off. <laughs> I, I can handle it. Look. I was a big girl. I take my vitamins every day. <laughs> oh, because you know what? One thing I got to say. I can see. Uh, <laughs> One thing I gotta say about uh, me and Simply D, we're we're straight up when it comes to this show. Some stuff we might say that the gentleman not might not like because it's the truth. I mean, right. you, get to, you get to a point in life, and this is why I wanted to start this show because you get to the point in life when you become a man that, and not being uh, arrogant, but being straight up that you don't give a damn how people feel about your opinion. Your opinion, that's how you feel. Exactly. There's it. no gray area. We've done right. things, and we talked about it on the past shows. Again, let me do this plug. If you missed any of the shows, you can go to YouTube and search the door radio and check out some of the past shows. But it comes to the point that we say what it is. If we did dumb shit, we did dumb shit, and we apologize for it. But you make mistakes, and you learn from them. I, mm -hmm. I think I think the idiots are the ones that make mistakes and just keep making mistakes. It's like that's that, true. I was like, damn, okay, you gonna keep running into that wall, getting them hickeys on your head, like you don't realize that that wall is not moving. That's it. You know, yeah. so, so that's one thing about us is like you know we we, and I, I think I can say this for simply D that we cool to say if somebody tell us we wrong, it's all right. We can accept that. Exactly. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's how you learn. I mean, that, that's showing that you have involved because there was a, once upon a time when someone would say something to you and, and, and kind of be checking you and you'd be like, hey, get the hell out of here. I ain't listening to that nonsense. Who the hell do you think you ought to be checking me? But yeah. now, if someone pull you to the side and said, yo, let me highlight you for a second. You take it and you, and you said, okay, maybe I need to make some adjustments and keep it moving. See, I think what it is is people are scared to admit when you're wrong and it's like everybody make mistakes but you can show your maturity when you're willing to accept that mistake and make changes yep all right i like i like all that i have a saying that um a wise man learns from their mistakes a wiser man learns from yours mm. now like with that. that being with that being said i don't necessarily think that there is a right and there's a wrong I think there's a difference in the way in which we do things because what I do may not work for you. It does not mean that it's wrong. It doesn't work for you. And it's been working for me. And if you have something that you feel as though would be a help to me in my growth, depending upon the way in which you say it, and honestly, depending upon my, my attitude that day, I may receive it in a good light. But it doesn't necessarily mean what you say is going to work for me. It may work for you. And it may be excellent advice as what we're giving tonight. We're giving our opinions and our thoughts based upon things we've gone through. So as my grandma say, eat the meat and leave the bone. It may be something in there you need, but you don't got to take it all down. I'm not going to force it down your throat. That's, that's facts. <laughs> that, that absolutely right. Uh, fits a lot of situations where people, you know, you take what's that uh saying about taking a horse to the water, but you can't make them drink? That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that goes across the board, even when it comes to uh, our children, relationships, um, business, everything. Yeah. <laughs> Look, mm -hmm. because, yes, you know, I mean, we all guilty of that of our moms telling us something and we'd be like, ah, then we don't listen. Then I ask get in trouble, then we'd be kicking ourselves like, damn, why didn't I listen to what she said? Mom was right. Right. <laughs> it's just yes. 
so often we feel like people have an okay. ulterior motive though when they speak to us it's like what are you getting out of it or what are you trying to prevent me from getting and a lot of times it's the way in which we think that we project on the other people where sometimes they're really giving some helpful advice however you don't have to bang my head against the wall like you can provide the information maybe i'll take it but maybe i don't utilize it then maybe at another time as i'm growing i'll get to the point where i utilize it it's not always going to be seen at that moment sometimes you'll have people that have information and they just want you to say yes and go with it right then and sometimes you got to take a moment and just meditate on it that's true everybody yeah. moves different everybody definitely moves different and and that goes back to what i said when we first started that people have to learn how to respect how other people move you know yes. everybody's not going to move the same you know and some people you just got to put to the side because they're not, out. Out. they're not moving the way uh, you can uh, move Is that that's true? so it's it, it's definitely uh that type of situation and i think that would stop a lot of the problems that's caused in relationships too yes because nowadays people get in relationships and they don't give it time to grow they just get in relationships and boom then they complain about it how long was you dating a couple months or well, damn True. You even give yourself a chance to uh to learn a person <laughs> you understand what i mean i think i've seen a, a question on facebook today and it was speaking about women moving men in their homes with their children within 30 days of meeting them. Mm. And that's, 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 that's a serious situation. However, it does happen. Let me, let me jump on that though. How long do you think a person should date before you even meet their people, kids? I don't, I don't know. It's like, I, I had one relationship that after my marriage my children's father after that he didn't meet my children for almost two and a half three months and then i had one relationship where it was on a humbug damn it he met them that night i'm like ah that wasn't the plan you tried to be slick you supposed to make me at the corner you came to the door you wrong so oh, uh, <laughs> i don't know he hit the joy he came tapping on the door what so, so, Mom, who so, had the door? The delivery man. The delivery man. Go back in your room. Let me go out and walk to the car and get this order. What? Yes. At least you ain't say hit their uncle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's your uncle. Wait, okay. You know how people. You know people like, oh, that's your uncle. I'm <laughs> yeah, he lost his keys. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's that's fun. But when I read that. I really did. I, so first of all, I thought that y'all would ask me that question. I said, I know I'm going to back myself in a wall, and they're going to say, well, Jay, how long do you think? So I was prepared for that, which I honestly don't know. However, I just thought about relationships and women and men and oh, the way we come together. I know different relationships where women are well-to-do. They're out there. They have their own, they own everything, and they're making it happen. And they'll meet somebody, and they're working on themselves. And we see potential. And we'll move the man in, you know, because he needs a place. We tired of being lonely and we don't worry about him paying the bills because we already doing that. He getting it together. Like it's a real slippery slope because some men will appreciate that and grow from it. And then you have some men that will take full advantage of it and take it for granted. So it's a sad situation that we put ourselves in at times. I'm gonna touch. I'm gonna end up touching on some of the stuff. I'm still scaring, so that's why I'm looking at my phone. I'm like tagging and trying to get people on. Cause I see we got a couple of viewers. So the viewers that's watching, if you have any comments, anything, type it in the comment. Like you yeah. are reading the uh, Facebook comments. So if you have anything that you want to chime in on our topic, uh, definitely chime in. I still look dark though, don't I? I'm gonna have to yeah. hit the light. Yeah. I, I, hold on. <laughs> I don't like how dark I look on the screen on our Zoom, so let's click the light on. Well, if you yeah. wouldn't have used the whole thing of Clorox bleach on that shirt, you would have been all right. Oh, you know what? This oh, speaking of the shirt, see now I gotta do it. Uh, <laughs> speaking of the shirt, this is a brown girls hashtag. We got this. They come on every second and fourth Sunday on Sador Radio. This is uh, a okay. the brown boy shirt. So let me make sure y'all can see it. Like you know, oh, I got okay. a plug. Got to plug it now since you said something. Even though I was going to plug it, but you know. It don't say Bobby Brown. It say Brown Boy. <laughs> okay. Okay, hold on. 
Yeah, so um, yeah, it's it's I, I'm gonna touch on some of the topics that we talked about when we had uh, uh, Fatima Queen, as we call her, that's from the Thick Girls Radio. She was on our show, that's uh, a couple weeks ago. It was like a month ago, maybe. She was on, and we had discussions about more so uh, men, as far as the men nowadays, you know. And I think she was saying, we well, I think one of the topics, if I'm not mistaken, was. When you date a man, if you the man has potential, say he don't have no job, but he has potential to grow in life. How do you feel about that, Jay? Like, do you do you say no? You got to have something going on. We're not gonna play that game that oh, I'm looking for a job, and then you end up coming home and they playing PlayStation Five. But but the rent not paid. You like damn? Wait a minute, didn't PlayStation Five just come out? So how do we got PlayStation? <laughs> Uh, well, forget that you're playing the PlayStation. You had no job. What money did you use to buy the PlayStation? How about that? Yeah. So what money did you use to buy the? I mean, I'm gonna answer your question, but yeah. since we're showing shirts, mine's is true to life. Can y'all see that? The hold it, hold the, Oh, there you no, because you in that you got that uh that background up. There you go. Hold it. So it says yeah. it's not worth being with a nut to bust a nut. <laughs> and at the bottom, it's a condom. It says, but if you got to, and it's a condom there. <laughs> I'm going I'm, I'm to I'm put that screen up on there. Because <laughs> my thing is this. Listen, I um, my hashtag is real shit, no joke. I believe in being straight up and just honest and real because, again, you learn from others. And my past is my past. I can't change it. And I promise you, you can't neither. So all I do is look forward to the future and enjoy the present that I'm in. With that being said, it's many uh, mistakes. And now I recognize those was learning opportunities to get me to where I am. So with my children's father, who was an excellent provider, I will always say that, excellent provider. However, our relationship, um, our intimacy, and not like it was he had a sexual issue, but just being intimate, enjoying each other, holding hands, things like that, that wasn't there. And so when our marriage dissolved and we divorced and I met someone else, I wasn't looking for a man with money because I was making good money and I already had a man that had money and I, was, I felt like I wasn't appreciated and respected. So now I'm looking for a man that just want to love and just be there for me and not, you know, do anything else, just admire and love and, and want me to grow. And I'm not concerned about his pocket because I'm handling things. And that worked for a little bit. It was, ooh, it was nice. And come home and he would even clean the house and he was good with the kids and a whole lot of other good stuff. And then the bills started piling up in the sense of when I was going to work, now I'm going to work late because we in the bed making love. Or he's driving my car, but he don't feel like getting up to take my ass to work because he won't have my car all day. So I'm going to work late. So now I'm in a place where I'm being threatened. I may lose my job, which is the bread and butter for every damn thing. But I'm so caught up in him and trying to make sure that he's doing well. And on my off days, I'm looking for jobs and places for him to get a job versus him doing that. Instead of me being supportive, I was more as a crutch. And it took me to come out of that relationship to understand that. So after being in that for years and years, have him having women in my home and in my car and taking thousands of dollars out of my checking account that I found out from the FBI, that damn serious type stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm not at the point, yeah, you, yeah, you, need, you need to have your job. <laughs> you need to work. <laughs> yes, <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and we need to enjoy each other. So we got to find a good balance. Because I also feel as though every person need to have something to do. If you at home twiddling your thumbs and I'm out here grinding, you're going to begin to get an attitude about that thing because you don't have nothing to do. You bored as hell. So you need to be working and doing something in your time because I'm doing something. And hopefully it's building each other and we're growing and making more money and more happiness. So that's some of the background of Jay Monet that y'all got on this show. So that's why right. I can handle both y'all. So 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 I think I think basically, man, people need to do research. What? <laughs> on people like I was saying, this jumping in relationships in a two months and then they moving in and got the key and all that. So so I think y'all guys, y'all look like women. Y'all guys can fake the funk, yo. It's not a whole lot to that. Oh, and yeah. unfor unfortunately, us women, you know, 
you keep hearing, oh, it's 10 men to 10, 10 women to every man and all that kind of foolishness or five or whatever the number is, you feel like you outnumbered and you always trying to, you know, accept things that you shouldn't accept because you don't value who you are. Like it's out of order. We got to get a balance. True. Well, uh, uh, Queen from Thick Girls Show said exactly fuck potential i'm gonna need you to have it together now <laughs> I, agree. I can agree with that because i don't i don't necessarily want a woman who wants me to take care of her always got her hand out and she's not doing anything i also not i'm not gonna be on the rotation you know what i mean i'm not gonna be sitting on a bench or part of the starting five okay <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> I'm laughing because th that's a song. <laughs> don't put, don't let me be part of the starting five. <laughs> that's that's it. But so, so my thing is this though. Nowadays, where where are we going left when it comes to dating? Because as we all know, it's it's nothing like it used to be. No, it's nothing. And I'm not out there. I just got a lot of people I talk to. That's how I know. I mean, you know. The, the dating game, from what I understand, is not what it used to be. Uh, a lot of men don't know how to be with men. That's number one. Um, they, they, they think a date is just maybe popping up over the female's house and sitting back and chilling and watching Netflix and then trying to screw. That's not a date. You know what Netflix I mean? Chill. A date, a, yeah, a date is not showing up and saying, you know, we going here and we splitting the bill. A date is showing up at the house. You got flowers, you know what I mean? And, and you greeting her at the door, not blowing a horn, waiting for her to run out the door. You know what I mean? You greeting her at the door, you opening the car door, you put her in the car, you take her to somewhere nice. You know what I mean? Where y'all gonna have an intimate moment because you're enjoying the intimacy of pure conversation and getting to know that person. That's a date. Stimulating that mind. Pretty much. And yeah, you want to get the body busy. If you stimulate go, the mind, then you want to get the body busy. Yeah, if we go back on the screw, okay. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? That that stimulation of the mind is so important that people don't even realize that. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, and dating is the worst right now. A bunch of weirdos and psychos. That's what Queen said. <laughs> How true. It's on both. True. Both parts. I was going to say, yeah, parts. I guess both ways, because I heard some stories about some of y'all women out there. And woo! Every time I hear these stories, I start thinking of misery. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, everybody got to check in at a certain amount of days, because if we don't hear from you, we check in the basement. <laughs> yo, that's the did truth. You, did you see the, uh, the thing I put up the other day? No. Uh -huh. Okay, so a gentleman friend of mine asked me, this is the story. He came home and wanted to be intimate with his wife. Kids was often whatever. He comes home, closes the door, takes off all father's clothes, lays in the bed next to her. She looks at him, nothing happens. So the next morning he says, What's, what was up? Oh, that was some gay stuff that you did. He's like, what? So he was, now he, his whole attitude and mentality is he ready to jet. Or, or start seeing other people. Wait a minute. So what was the wait a minute? What was the gay? I'm trying to catch the gay part. Him just getting in the bed. <laughs> he on. said it was gay for him to get in the bed naked and lay next to her and and just wait for her to take her stuff off and for something happened. Jay Monet, what's your opinion? <laughs> I feel as though I mean I feel as though it's just a really basic conversation. Again, communication. We need to talk. So. Saying to her, I would like you to be a little more aggressive or I would like you to take the lead sometime. And either she won't say yes or no. And from that, they'll begin to, to talk and make some decisions. However, I, I don't think that that's gay or anything like that, you know? How, I also think that foreplay is more than just that moment. I think foreplay builds up. So like right. throughout the day, you know the kids was going to be going. You should have been texting me. You know, I want to eat dinner and I want to eat, well, yeah. you know, I want dessert or something. You know, you right. build that thing up. So what's going on in her mind is going on in your mind again. It's in the mind. So then when you finally see each other, it's like, whoa. Right. Right. You right. know, so it, it, for me, it need to be a little build up. Right. See, fellas? 
that's what you got to do to your lady. So stop sending dick pics and call Please. to be romantic. And then maybe you can kiss her. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's some women no. that like that, but you gotta know your woman because maybe that turns her on, and that's all right. It just don't don't just initially start that way. Right, right. No, okay. not just off the top. <laughs> no. Do 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 still do that? Like send female pics? Like, cause I seen a bunch of posts. No lie, the past <laughs> week I seen some females really going off about that. Like, yo, stop sending me pics, and I'm like, damn, do still do that? <laughs> like. <laughs> That was on MySpace type stuff back then. Like nobody do that now. Like, oh I'm yeah, kidding. they do. They've done it since MySpace. I do know that. I don't know if they're still doing it today. Today, but yeah, last year, I didn't have women send me pictures of their breasts. I'm like, what the hell? Did the haircut? <laughs> what? Did you not hear me talking about good di? Did you not hear? No, I, and, and it's funny. I, and the only reason I, I asked, I, I mean. You got to be more smart. And nowadays, people actually screenshot your pictures and post it and say, look at this boy and put your name out there and get you looking like a nut on social media. Yeah. Like, so that's why I'm like, do, is people really stupid enough to like do that? Like, Okay, here, here you are. I'm going to give you this real quick. So it's a guy that's been trying to talk to me on one of the dating sites for probably like eight or nine months. She said, that's probably within good. the last, I don't know, two months, we exchanged... Um, pictures so because i had it as a private account so we exchanged pictures it was just conversation so y'all know i post philly events every day i'm gonna go ahead and drop that in philly events every day right. and i post it in all the different groups where at so yesterday i get a message on my phone from a number i'm not familiar with and the message says you owe me 13 hugs and seven kisses you up oh, here doing videos and i can't get a hug i'm like what in the hell <laughs> So this is a dude that's on the dating site that happened to be in one of the Facebook groups because that's generally open stuff that's seen my picture. And then he went on my page because we having a comedy show. I got my number there and he got my number and this man to text me. So let me ask you, now we're going to get into something that you wanted to talk about. Is that stalking or is that- Hell stalking? yeah. You better be looking in the basement for me. Hell damn yeah. Or is, that, yeah. or is that yeah. is that being uh aggressive with something that you want? Hell, yeah. okay, okay. So so let's just go ahead and go further with this conversation. Let's just go further with the conversation. So I reach out because I'm looking and I'm really trying to figure out like who the hell this is. So I call him. And the thing is, when I send texts and stuff like that, I always do an emoji face with a kiss or a heart. So he said for the, all the pictures that I sent the messages, he has like 10 of them. And I went back through the messages, I didn't gave him six. The man told me he gonna take me to court because I can't renege on a promise. It is stalking and crazy because I don't know if this man is serious or joking. Now, that right there sounds like some, uh, <laughs> take me to court and all that. That's a, No, he might have been joking. I don't think, I'm certain he's joking, but it's just the mentality that people would yeah. have. And I mean, that was just yesterday. Oh, wow. That's the type of situation you got to make sure everybody know who this dude is, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. Like, yo, no. Jay Mo, Monet supposed she didn't do the events, Philly events. We're not even speaking that foolishness. We don't <laughs> even right. do that. Like, where the hell is she at? <laughs> Jay is right here. Do not play. <laughs> Look, you got to know I live sure. all the time. So if y'all see something live, there's a problem. Keep playing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look, you got to be careful, man. This, like, uh, we said unwarranted, unwanted, uh, and not even impressive dick pics. She said she, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look, stalking is real and it's, and it's scary. And it's scary. I was actually scared of my stalker. Mm. Yes, I was scared. Isn't that something that that uh, a man, when a man is scared, that means she's very that's she's I was, impressive. I was actually running across the Wells Fargo parking lot to get away. <laughs> so you mean like physically you were scared? I just, yes. I'm saying you talking about you were scared she was going to do something to you. Okay. No, I was scared. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Simply D had one of these. Check this out. He had one of these type of women. <laughs> Here you go. I got a song for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> She bust the windows out to the car. Right. <laughs> yeah, the Jasmine Sullivan female. 
<laughs> Yo, she was she, she was telling my kids she was gonna get me. Oh See, yeah. No. yeah, that's too much. That's too much. And so do you get the law involved? Did you sit down and talk or what do you No, do you I, I, I I waited it out. I was I was thinking about getting the police involved, but I waited it out and then it resolved itself. But I was scared for a minute. Yeah, this stuff is real out here. Yeah. And especially with us becoming like in the public and people starting to recognize and know, like you, you gotta be careful. Yep. So. Have to be. Yes. So that was, that was my first experience. So let me ask you something. Since we talked about the uh, children, as far as your the person that you're dating getting to know, the time frame as far as the children. So you said what? Say two, three months, four months before they meet the children. I think so, and I think it depends upon the age of the children. Right. Um, with that relationship that I was in, I actually had my current boyfriend to meet my ex-husband. I thought that that was extremely important because you're going to be around his children. So I thought that that was important. So I think it's also, a, a, how, what you think? Like how you made up? It's important to me to try to keep all lines clear and respect all the way around. Of course, I didn't do it perfectly. However, I tried to do the best that I could with being respectful towards everyone. I, I ask that because then what happens is after you get put three months in and the person meets your children, how about if the children don't like them? That happens. <laughs> <laughs> you put time in, you dated and all that, they hit the hotel a couple of times and now it's like, my all right, so dad, I don't like her. I don't like him. <laughs> so it's after it's after ten, right? You say we doing a delta, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so the truth is, depending upon how good the dick is, depend upon if you listen to the child's opinion and their thoughts. Because if the dick is really good, just honestly, child, you a child, I'm grown. You're not gonna tell me what to do with my life. <laughs> if the dick is not that good, you know what? I was thinking about that. You may have a good point. You do got some iffy ass ways. That's the excuse. So, real shit, no joke. That's the excuse to get out of it, huh? What? <laughs> what? No, you know I love my kids, babe. Uh, you know okay. I do. Don't work. <laughs> Look. And then the thing is, like. What kind of kids are you raising? Are you raising selfish children? Because maybe they're just upset that someone else is there because you're spending time with them. You're, whatever you're doing with them is taken away from them. Or are they sincerely seeing with a true eye for what's best? Like, you have to know your kids and be honest about it. Yeah, yeah. They go to that communication within the family. Yeah. I had a family meeting. So what y'all think? He's about, you know, yeah. what y'all think about dad's new girlfriend? Well, I sit in that board in South with a 40 bottle sitting on the corner. <laughs> I don't know, Dad, if you really want to do You'd be like, huh, what? <laughs> look, look, look. You never know. You the world know is small. With a 40 bottle. Hey, the world is small. Yeah. Hey, for real. So you got to communicate, because that's the person, like you said, that's going to be at Thanksgiving dinner. You know? And, and today's time, I guess it's easy to look anybody up, because you go ahead on their Facebook and Instagram, you can see a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. Of daddy exactly. and mommy dating. Shoot, yeah. nowadays with this damn technology, you could pay what is it, nineteen ninety five, and do a background check on a person. Pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> and you'd be like, "So, uh, what was that situation back in nineteen eighty eight? When you got locked up for snatching pocketbooks or something like that?" Mm -hmm. They were looking at you like, "Huh? Oh, you didn't have a background check?" Hey, yeah. I've done that. Look, <laughs> I've done that. Look. Working for a lawyer in Virginia. I started looking up the current boyfriends and just some other friends just to mess with them because again, you paid nineteen ninety five, which is the true price, and it was unlimited because he was a lawyer. So I came in, I started throwing addresses as we laying in the bed making love. I just started throwing addresses and names. He just stopped. What the hell? Yeah, I got you, and I got you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Hey, mm -hmm. nowadays you, you have to do that. You know what's crazy is when. You can you you can talk to someone and you got the information. So when you throw it at them, it's nothing they they can really say. They can't really yeah. deny because I got your ass. That's I got it. you. I got you. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. You'd be like, yo, you ever been locked up? No, babe, I ain't never been locked up. I don't do stuff like that. Damn. I can tell. Then they'd be like, Ab is for projects, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, okay, that's where you're from, right? You'd be like, yeah, I even know. <laughs> then you think, you know, us men sometimes, we so damn stupid. We think she talked to somebody that know us or something, you know? So they'd be like, no. Nah. Then they pull this paper out. They pull one of the, <laughs> pull the paper out like this to show you. And you see the city stamp at the bottom or whatever. You're like, oh, you caught up. So yeah, because some of that stuff is the public record. You don't even have to spend the money. It's a yeah. public record. Yeah. Just type the name in. That's why no. I tell ladies, stop messing with niggas with nicknames. You need to know government names. You need to meet exactly. grandma and aunt. The hell with that nickname shit. Yeah. Oh, that's black. I don't need to know black. I need to know John Wilson. Ray Ray <laughs> Mookie. And, mm -mm. Ain't no Ray Ray Mookie in them. I want your name. No, I don't know none of them. Yeah, especially you got that person in your house around your family. We got to be careful. Is he uh, just Ray Ray? They call him Ray Ray. I think his name is Raymond, but we've been calling him Ray Ray. So, <laughs> the hell. So, so, so when your when your child brings home that type of person, how do you deal with it? He come in there, don't don't pull it like this. You know, hat still on, pants hanging off his ass, dirty drawers showing, dirty boxes. You know, D. That question must be for you, because I know he know. Oh, that's your question. I, I, I'm straight up like, uh, yo, spin the hat. That's number one. Number two, pull your pants up. In fact, you gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> they, to already, they already, they already know. They already know. Um, my one daughter, I had to go pick her up from school, so I'm sitting at the red light, and I'm watching her and this dude talking to her, and I see her look at me and say something to the dude. He don't move. So when I pull up. I cracked the window. He come all over to the car, like, yo, Mr. Dennis, I said, yo, what did my daughter say to you when I was sitting there? Like, she said, I need to start walking because they go my dad. I said, why didn't your ass start walking? I don't want to meet you. <laughs> That's yeah. Nowadays, that is, it's funny because nowadays you don't even want to meet the person because it's like you get attached to people and then you have them in your house, then all of a sudden they do something stupid and then they broke up. In the yeah, you know. All right, I well, think, all right. No, we we need to know who the hell these kids out here dating. So yeah. bullshit. You need to meet every damn body, especially those crazy kooky ones. That's for damn sure who you need to meet. For they wind up in the basement some day away. Right, they, they already know how I am because they 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 called me on the phone like, oh, Mr. Dennis, we we got our, we had an argument. I didn't hit her. Just that I'd be like, yeah, you you tell me the truth because I don't want to come find you because you I do. If I have to come find you, I'm not even talking. Not talking. And that and that you gotta respect for them them, you know, respecting the parent. Cause it was a situation where and and this was like a sister. And I told the dude, dig this. You can date my sister all you want, as long as you respect her and you don't hit her. That's 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 it. I know y'all gonna be arguing. Come on, one thing I'm gonna do is keep it hundred with you. I know y'all gonna go through your argument, you're breaking up and all that, but just don't put your hands on. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's just that's just where it's at. You can be mad. You can run up and down the street if you want. <laughs> look, you better go do some push-ups or something somewhere. But just don't put your hands. Look, just don't put your hands on. You know, mm -hmm. and that and just yeah, just don't be disrespectful. Yeah, like no, the, the, um, the one dude I had never met him. He come walking up in the club. You know, one of my daughters is having a birthday party. I'm like, where's your sister at? Oh, she on her way with the dude. I said, oh, okay. He come walking up in the club all hugged up on him. And then he gonna come over to me like, yo, what's up, Mr. Dennis? So it's like, uh, do we know each other? He's like, no. I said, why would you disrespect me walking here all hugged up with my door? And he looked at me. I said, you know what? Don't even sit over here with the party. You sit your ass on the other side of the bar for the rest of the night. And that's what he did. And I wasn't playing. <laughs> I like that. So let me ask you, do you think that parents nowadays are more lean. That's why things are so discombobulated right now when it comes to everything that's going on. As far as, as far as like this individual is not having respect for the parents, I should say. You know, are parents just letting things too we too loosey goosey nowadays or what? I think it depends upon the parent. I tell my children, like, I apologize. I'm young. I had my first child two weeks before my 17th birthday, my first child. And I have four daughters. However, I had old ass parents. My mom was 40 and my dad was 50. So I was young, but I was old. <laughs> so right, right. with me bringing them up, 
them, but I pretty much brought them up the way I was brought up. Children ought to be seen and not heard. Right. And as I began to grow and mature now that they're, I mean, they're grown now, but at that time, getting into their teenage years, I'm starting to recognize that, like, you know, they need to, they need to have some room. They need to have an opinion. You need to give them some rights. Not necessarily saying you're going to be right. Right. But I'm going to give you some rights and recognizing that even though you're my child, you're a person, you're a human, you're going through your own feelings and emotions. And I have to respect that. Not wanting to be your friend, just appreciating you as the human that you are, you know. So now, I'm piggyback I'm off of that too. I like, I'm glad you said that. I'm going to piggyback off of that because do you feel as though, and this is on a different topic, but it's something about what you said that I wanted to bring up for our listeners. And for everybody that's tuned in, that's listening on the radio, you're listening to Sador Radio, the station is more than music. If you missed any of the show, you can go back to the YouTube channel later on and look up the show and start it from the beginning, or you can check out the podcast. All you got to do is search Sador Radio. Just Google Sador Radio. You see us all over the place. <laughs> but off of the topic that you said, do you feel as though, and this is for both of y'all, simply be, this is for you to answer also. Do you feel as though that we're not more, we're not, with the, with the, the how do you say, with what you said about giving them room, communicating with your children, right? And also not saying that you're always going to be right and you're always going to listen to them because sometimes they might teach us stuff too. Do you feel as though that parents don't do that enough or people in general don't do that enough with the generation under us. That's why that lack of communication between us, because we don't respect the younger generation enough to be able to sit and listen to them instead of saying, no, it's this way, this the way I want it to be, that's that. Uh, I, I believe my philosophy is everyone should learn something every single day. If you're, if you're not learning something new or something different every single day, it's like you're closing off your mind. So I never try to close off my mind to any of my kids. My 10-year-old taught me something, you know what I mean? Because this little dude is like into computers. So I, I, I locked myself out of my car. I couldn't get in the car. He was like, oh, what kind of car is it then? <laughs> oh, the key the thing is right over there. You just move that and, and you can get in the car. Oh, really? Okay. And it worked. So <laughs> <laughs> you should never have a closed mind because anybody can teach you anything on any given day. And that's where I that's where I was. Jay, what you got? All right, so with my daughters, they mess with me because I have six grandchildren. Ages eleven to well, eleven months. Eleven years old to eleven months. And they like, mom, you are so easy going on them. Like, you definitely, I definitely discipline them however I am. Because I think, I think it's the way generations are supposed to be. Like, when you're raising your kids, you going to work, you handling business. It's like, you don't have the patience for that foolishness shit. Right, right. And then as you get older and you mature and you recognize it's not built up to what you thought it was. And I mean, life. And you sit back and breathe. And now you had a grandchildren. Now you're breathing through this thing instead of stressing through this thing as you did with yours. So now it's like you can sit back and just appreciate. So I appreciate the hell out of my grandchildren because I'm in a different place to understand it's not what I thought it was, mm -hmm. you know? Um, two things I'm going to say. Now, when you talk about teaching, I, I love my kids and I like them a lot, but they get on my nerves. Because with this technology, I really don't understand it. I'm almost 50 and I don't care. I do what I got to do. So I'll be asking them for help. And them hussies will tell me, wait a minute, mom. When we was young, you told us to go to the dictionary and look stuff up. You can go on YouTube. They explain everything. I don't, I don't like them. I don't, I don't like them. They, they be sending me to YouTube. Like you sent us to the dictionary to find out. Go to YouTube. They even say it out loud for you. Oh, so yes, they teach me. I, I appreciate it. They teach me. They they definitely do. However, you know, you you just you gotta you grow with time and you grow with understanding, and that's like a full circle. Yeah. So that's with the children. That's in your relationships. That's within yourself. That's what's most important. You grow within yourself and you begin to see things different. As simply said, like you're able to yield yourself. To hear what somebody else has to say because you don't know it all and you can recognize they may have something good to say as with his son like 
I need that little boy phone number. I just I need his number. <laughs> <laughs> Speed dial. You can just send that to me. And, and the reason why I asked that, because I think what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up to, you know how people are always knock in the younger generation, like, oh, they bad, oh, they destroying the world, this and that. But when you really sit back and look at the, the younger generation, and when I say younger generation, I'm talking about like 25 and under. Right. They're, they're probably smarter than our generation, because I think we're in the same bracket, all of us on here. When I say that, like, Simply D said they could pick up a phone, like you said, technology, this and that. We didn't have none of that. Everything was hands on. No, yes, sitting at the, uh, the, the, the table not, playing this. We were out <laughs> thinking of games, making games up, you know, throwing rocks, marbles, and stuff like that. So the reason why I brought it up is because we're trying to come up with something that the generations cannot have this gap. Right. And at the same time, have respect for one another. And I think if we could come up with that, things would be a little more, you know, even balanced. Because right now, it's not balanced. Because they say, oh, the younger generation don't have respect for nobody, this and that. And I don't think that a lot of them, it's not that they don't have respect. It's just that some of them wasn't taught how to have respect. Or they supposed to say, excuse me, or hold the door for a woman, or, you know, pick up, like, trash off the ground don't throw it on the ground throw it in the trash can it's just certain things but at the same time they don't want to listen to us because we don't listen to them they feel like you know you ain't listening to me why am i listening to them that's the first thing they always say well they don't know what we're going through they don't listen they think they know everything you know so that's the reason why i asked that that if the better if we had a better communication when it comes to the generation gap then i think that the world would be better you know, as far as, and we can respect each other a little better. All right, wait a minute, Mark. I'm going to put that on the list right under world hunger, solving world hunger. <laughs> bringing the gaps. Number two, bringing <laughs> two generations together. Okay. Under world hunger. I got you. That may move up. I, I got you. Hey, you know what? And, and think about it. That, if that, it was this. I love this, it. Yeah, because I be looking, like, I deal with a lot of people. You know, I work with the public. And I work with all types of people because where I'm at, I deal with people that work in Center City. Then I deal with the young boys that's just going to Center City, that's on the train from West Philly, then people that live in Darby. And I'm okay. just sitting there looking and I just be like watching. And it's just like a total different, it's like I have to detox afterwards because the different energies sometimes overwhelm me. Yeah, it's like because you got the business people that act like you know, ooh, I'm on a train. Like you decide to ride this damn L train. Then you got the boys that's breaking their weed open, just throwing it on the floor, and then you got you know the homeless people that's there. So it becomes to the point like, how do we how do we even this out? How do we give respect to each other? You know I brought I mean? somebody a little younger in, so maybe she can give her perspective. Because honestly, we were speaking about this. I was talking about um. Can y'all see us? I hate this. Yeah, y'all look like y'all floating. <laughs> that, that, that backdrop, we have you look like you like if you go like this, you look like you're on a moon and shit. <laughs> All right, but nonetheless, um, Tom Brokoff, if y'all remember him from yeah. years ago being a news anchor, they mm -hmm. was asking him about the election and how he felt. And this was about 2:30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And he began to talk about like the looting and the violence. And he was like, I don't understand. You know, when Martin Luther King was out there, it was peaceful and I don't understand. And I'm like, they're tired. We're tired. Right. So that's the energy you're getting. And they are young enough to have the energy to go and make it happen. They're able to do so many things that we want to do. Like, I think even by this time, Mal Malcolm and Martin would be like, all right, I'm tired of this shit. Don't nobody hit me no damn more. <laughs> like, enough is a damn enough. And I think this generation is ready to, you know, fight that fight for us. However, they need to listen some so they can have the wisdom to go along with the energy and the tenacity to get it the hell done. You don't need to just be just going in circles, not doing anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're thinking, beautiful. Say who you are. Who are you? Hello, guys. I am King Akim. Thank you for having me on the show. Uh, I feel as though, you know, um, there's, there's a time and a place for everything. There's a way to do something. There's a way to do something 
right for you and there's a way to do something that is going to be wrong for you in that moment and lead to a wrong outcome um however you have to really tap into the universal energies you know the ground that you're walking on the air that you're breathing the tools that you're using for your everyday life and um <laughs> see i don't even know how to hold a damn phone i don't even know how to hold a phone <laughs> and um just guide yourself learn how to guide yourself we've been taught so much through parents through you know tv being programmed all these different things however what are we doing for ourselves how are we conditioning ourselves and you know allowing ourselves to ascend to new heights and new levels and making our yesterdays jealous of our todays and having a reason to really be cocky and you know really following an order and a structure you know, within oneself, and then being able to communicate and come out of a shell that we've been, you know, placed in, and really, you know, make the world a better place and really change stuff for ourselves. Be a leader within ourselves and not, you know, um, uh, what do you, what do you say? Just idolizing, forward. idolizing people just because they have this or they have that. Like, what are you really made of? What's your value? What is what is your value? What's your integrity? What compassion? For those You're that like don't me. know, y'all do know that this is this is a vegan. You know they I, in their own. Not a vegan. That's just a word. I eat. I'm gonna say it like this: She burns sage all the time. Y'all got me. She walk around <laughs> burning sage. My stomach bothering me. I think I'm the bad seed around here. I don't know. Okay, that's. <laughs> I think, but I think the one thing, the one thing that's, that you said is a lot of times things are energy. Mm -hmm. Like, like for example, when you listen to music, right? A lot of people listen to you know slow music, jazz, and stuff when they want to calm down and bring it down. Or if you go to sleep and you put on the waterfall sound or something like that, think about it. You sleep at peace, right? But if you put on rap music, it amps you up. It makes you work out. When people work out, they don't work out to classical music. I, I do. Well. I do. <laughs> See? Walk into that one. Really, you gotta, yeah, I did you walk know, into that one, right? So, you got to breathe with it. What are we without? But no, breath? but when you so, you, so you run on a treadmill to classical music. I What's your, really, what is your alarm? Do you, breathe, do you, really do, you do breathing exercise to classical music? What's your alarm? Everything's about breathing for me, though. So even when I'm working out, I'm more focused on my breath and actually toning my body and, you know, being, allowing myself to be solid with myself than, you know, okay. or, or, or trying to go ham or anything like that. So I'm exactly. doing what I'm doing. You feel exactly. me? Exactly. It's, it's, a, it's more so a different type of workout, though. It's not, mm -hmm. you're not. Uh, 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 off of classical music, you're more so breathing as you're working out. You're relaxing. You're getting your mind and everything together at the same time, right? I feel like everything is different for everybody. Okay, okay, <laughs> no, okay. No, 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 I agree with you. Still, everything is with the breath, and and okay. me calming my breath to me getting exactly mentally where I know I need to be and my right. goal for that moment. It's it's hitting. It's hitting. It's intense. I'm intense myself. So that breath and everything I'm doing is totally. Mark, I'm trying to save you. Don't you do this to you. I, believe it or not. Mark, listen, I, listen, listen I to me, Mark. Let, let, me, let, me, let me just share this with you. When she goes to place something in the trash, you know how you bend down to pick something up? Right. When she does that, she probably do about 20 squats while she down here. Only thing she's doing is putting something in the trash. You're <laughs> laughing. You're laughing. I'm telling you the truth. I believe you. Not that's, a joke. The, that's the part. That You're I, laughing. I believe this you. This is real shit. I believe you. <laughs> this is real shit. When she reached to get something out the closet, she just go ahead and do some jumping jacks. I'm like, please. However, she's gorgeous, and I appreciate that because it's truly from the inside out. People look at it and they're like, God, you're gorgeous, and she is, so praise God for that. However, that's with a lot of hard work, dedication, and breathing through every thing. <laughs> Y'all don't know how serious but this you know, is. But you know what's crazy, though, Jay, to be honest with you? What? The energy, like, her energy is there, though. It's not a... a a negative energy, like as no. she's talking and stuff like that. You know what I mean? No. 
So, so I understand exactly what she means far as just in a different place, which you have some of those people that I call it the area I do type of situation, which is good. I'd rather be around that than be around a bunch of negative energy and the rah, rah, because like I just was saying, me working with the public, sometimes I have to detox because I'm around so many different energies. It's like, All right, so you know, listen, um, with y'all welcoming me to the show, me having her, I was thinking that we could define some of these words. And I was looking at the word soul. You have it? And so with this being the soul of the man and heart of a woman, mm -hmm. we looked up the word soul. And if you'll give her a moment, that's all right. She's going to define this for you. So uh, the ancient Egyptians, so there are five components of the soul. And the five components are Ren, Ka, Ib, Ba, and Shwet. The simple concept is Ren, which is literally your name. It lives for as long as you are remembered or can read or can be read about in inscriptions or included in prayers for the ancestors and the achievements. Ka is also easily enough to translate into modern idiom, for it is the vital essence that makes the difference between the living and the dead, between life and dead meat, between warm body and cold clay. Ib is literally the heart formed from a single drop of the clot, the clotted <laughs> blood extracted from your mother's heart at the hour of your conception or birth. By heart, the Egyptians meant not just the organ by pumping blood around your body, but the seat of your soul, the good directing force in your life searching after truth, peace, and harmony. Ba is that which makes each of us unique and different, that which makes us strive and achieve the motivator, but also the hungry elemental force that needs food and sex. In some form, your ba is destined to survive after death, often depicted or imaged as the human-headed bird with, um, good fortune will go forth by day into light but might also end up existing only in the dark like a bat or the ruining owl sweat is your shadow and by the extension of the other you as well as being used to or described as a statue a model or a painting of a human so five components that make up that soul and when i read that i thought it was beautiful however based on what you just said her energy itself I said she would present that so much more softer and eloquent because again, it's just something spiritual and enlightening in that. But there you go. Five. Five components <laughs> that make that soul up. 1130. <laughs> I, I, I like that. I definitely, definitely like that. Yeah, yeah. it's a good joint. That, that deep. He said that was deep. <laughs> 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 no, because you know that that was deep because you broke down basically the okay, five elements, right? Yeah, yeah. So that that definitely was deep. But on that note, I'm gonna take a quick break since it's almost eleven o'clock. We're gonna take a ten minute break so I can post the music going for our radio okay. listeners. I'm also uh, gonna stop. So for everybody that want to catch the second part of this, that's watching on YouTube, all you gotta do is go to part two. And if you're listening on our podcast, all you just have to do is do part two, because this show will be made up in two parts. This is part one. So thank you for listening to Door Radio. The station is more than music. If you notice, I don't say the uh, the uh, the show title. It's so damn long now. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be right back. You're listening to Door Radio. The station is more than music. I like, I like. Yeah. 